Our Old Testament lesson this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verses 10 through 17. It can be found on page 488 in your pew Bible. Isaiah 7, beginning at verse 10. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. He will eat curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. But before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid waste. For the Lord will bring on you and on your people and on the house of your father a time unlike any since Ephraim broke away from Judah. He will bring the king of Assyria. The New Testament lesson is in the book of Romans. Chapter 1, first seven verses, found on page 795. Romans 1. Paul, a servant of Christ, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, regarding his son, who as to his human nature was a descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the son of God by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and for his name's sake, we received grace and apostleship to call people from among all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. And you also are among those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel lesson is from uh, Matthew 1. Would you please rise for the reading of the Gospel? Verses 18 through 25, page 681 in your pew Bible, Matthew 1. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Here is the reading of the lessons. You may be seated. morning I'd like to speak from the point of view of Joseph, the wife of Mary and the stepfather of Jesus our Lord. I've always sought to honor God. Proverbs says, a good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. All my life I've tried to live up to the name given me, Joseph. Joseph, one of the patriarchs, was known for many things. He was righteous, and yet his brothers sold him into a foreign land. I strove to be righteous, and I found myself in a foreign situation. How does one parent the Messiah? But just as Joseph entrusted himself to the Lord, so did I. For the Lord brought good out of the situation, out of his situation. He saved Israel from starvation and destitution. 
The Lord brought good out of my situation as well. By following the angel's instruction, I saved Jesus from the sword of Herod. Our forefather Joseph resisted the sexual temptations of Potiphar's wife. So also I kept my wife as a virgin until after the birth of Jesus, God's son. Joseph was well known also as the interpreter of dreams. I am no interpreter, but God has certainly used dreams in my life to accomplish his purposes in the birth and in the early life of Jesus. And so there are certain similarities between my, my namesake, the patriarch Joseph, and me. But no one else has ever been in my position, the earthly father of the Messiah. Back when our parents chose Mary and I for each other, we were both overjoyed because both of us had sought all our lives to please God. She was a holy and righteous young woman whose husband I would be honored to be. But soon after our betrothal, strange things began to happen. She went off to Judea suddenly to visit her relative Elizabeth. For three months she was gone. And when she got home then she told me that earlier she had received a visit from the angel Gabriel who told her that she would be the mother of God's son, Jesus the Messiah. Well, I thought that was certainly a creative excuse to hide her infidelity to me. But I loved her and couldn't bear to hurt her publicly or to shame her, and so I began making plans to divorce her instead. Then I began to receive angelic visitations. The first one confirmed Mary's story, down to the last detail. A few months later, we received word of Caesar's decree regarding the census, so we would have to travel to Bethlehem for Jesus to be born. Then when he was born, in a stable no less, some shepherds came to worship him. They had also received a visit from angels. When we took Jesus to the temple for purification and the dedication rites, two elderly people, Simeon and Anna, spoke words of prophecy over Jesus. None of these people we had ever seen before. Later, we received more surprise visitors, magi, royal advisors, who came all the way from Babylon. They said a star led them, even to the very house. What kind of a star leads people to a house? Then I received more angelic visitors, first warning me to flee Bethlehem, for Herod would try to kill Jesus. We made it out of Bethlehem just in time and escaped to Egypt. I received more angelic guidance, first that Herod died and that we should return to Israel, and then to go to Galilee, not Judea. All these things proved to fulfill scriptural prophecy about the Messiah. How does one parent the Messiah? I'm not too sure yet, but of one thing I am certain, God will guide my every step. The Lord has been faithful thus far to lead me and to fulfill his word at the same time. How can I not trust my heavenly father to guide me as Jesus earthly father? I may not see how Jesus' ministry turns out, but I'm not worried. If God has led and guided and protected me, will he not lead and guide and protect Jesus, his son, to fulfill his messianic ministry? Hear the words of Joseph this morning. Indeed, Joseph did not see the Messiah's ministry on earth. Joseph disappeared from the biblical record after Jesus' boyhood appearance in the temple. But his legacy was that of a righteous man, a good and faithful husband and father, a man of great trust and great obedience to the Lord and to his instructions. And his reputation will stand the test of time. Hebrews 13 Verses six, uh, Hebrews 11, verse 13 through 16 speaks of Abraham, but these words could well have been spoken of Joseph as well. 
All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Certainly, even though Joseph may not have seen his son do his ministry on earth, he saw it at a distance from the heavenly city. As part of that cloud of witnesses, which also witnesses our lives. As Jesus said of Abraham, he could surely say of his father Joseph, he saw my day and was glad. And also like Joseph, we don't know what the future holds for us, but we have only to look to the past. What has God done in the past? What has he done for Israel? What has he done for us? What has he done for my nation? What has he done for me? And we see that God has always been faithful. God has always provided. God is always true to his promises. Truly, we do not know the future, but we know the one who holds the future in his hands, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So like Joseph, then, let us exercise the trust and the willing obedience to walk in the light that Jesus gives us. Amen. Sing our sermon.